Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A few days ago, Matter was officially launched during an event in Amsterdam where they had some demos of Matter working seamlessly with different devices and ecosystems, announced that 190 devices have now been certified for Matter, as well as hosted guest speakers from various companies that gave some insight into what to expect over the coming months as Matter rolls out. We also saw some companies like Akara, Philips Hue, Eve and Amazon giving us timelines of what to expect as far as software updates for your existing devices, as well as roadmaps going forward, which was pretty interesting to see. Now, the main event was live streamed and is now uploaded to the CSA YouTube channel, which I'll link down in the description. It's about an hour and a half long and I did watch the entire thing, so I'll try and recap everything that's happened here. And yeah, let's talk about matter and what it means for us consumers going forward. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it so easy to build your online presence with a website in no time at all. They have lots of amazing templates to get you started, all of which can be fully customized to suit your style and your needs using their intuitive drag and drop style interface so that no matter your experience level, you can build your own website that looks just wonderful. Just wonderful. All plans come with 24 seven award-winning support should you ever need it. And all of their websites are auto magically optimized for the perfect desktop or mobile experience. So no matter if you are selling a product, creating guides and tutorials, podcasts, or even newsletters, your website will always give the best user experience. Check out Squarespace for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash everything smart home to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain name using code everything smart home. The matter presentation was kicked off with a promo video where they talked about some of the hardships of the smart home so far that we are all familiar with like protocols and figuring out if this device works with that ecosystem or this ecosystem and all of that sort of mess. They did reiterate quite a few times about their mission for everything to work seamlessly together, regardless of the ecosystem you are using, which of course is promising, but there is some cracks starting to show, which we will talk about in just a second, which are hopefully just temporary blips. And yeah, they did just generally reinforce the simplicity for the user message, which is always welcome. Oh, also, Shout out to the presenter of this video who did a whole six minute plus video in one continuous single take. That might just be the most impressive thing I saw at the whole entire event. At the event, they also announced that they have 190 devices that are certified or about to be certified for Matter, which sounds like quite a lot of devices and you are probably wondering, well, where are they to buy then? And that is definitely a valid question and they aren't here right now, but rather they have passed certification and should be available soon over the coming weeks and months. And we did get a bit of an idea when that might be from some manufacturers, which I'll mention in just a second. One thing that did become a little bit apparent is that there is a distinct lack of matter controllers currently, which was pointed out by Jennifer Tui from The Verge, with only three devices currently having support for matter. The Apple HomePod mini, Apple TV and Samsung SmartThings Hub currently able to do it. Oh, and if you aren't aware, a Matter controller is pretty essential part of controlling a Matter device, basically acting as the gateway between your phone and your Matter devices. So you can see how only having three devices able to act as a Matter controller currently is a bit of a showstopper. Although Amazon did mention during their keynote that they will be updating many of their Echo devices soon, but Google hasn't yet commented on when they will be updating their devices. There seems to be a strong commitment also to over the air updates, which is good. Over the air updates were mentioned several times during the keynote, and this will be the way that manufacturers offer new features as well as update their older existing devices. The CSA president, Tobin Richardson, also mentioned during the talk that there would be biannual updates to matter, so two per year with dot releases in between that could potentially add new device categories. It's not clear yet how these updates will work just yet, but I would assume that the CSA will finalize the updated spec and release it, at which point it will be available for manufacturers to use, who will then build their own software updates and release them to you. So just because there is two matter updates per year, doesn't mean you will necessarily get them straight away. I would imagine it will still take some time afterwards if indeed they do get released at all. 
We also got confirmation of the hardware categories available right now with the 1.0 release, which includes lighting, switches and plugs, HVAC controls, controllers and bridges, TVs and media devices, blinds and shades, security sensors and door locks, with additional categories for devices coming later down the road with those software updates mentioned previously. Speaking of updates and devices, we did see a number of notable companies announce their plans and roadmaps for existing devices and new devices. Amazon, who was one of the key speakers at the event, announced that 17 of their Echo devices will receive updates to support Matter over Wi-Fi before the end of this year, so likely in December 2022, and that they would have support for plugs, switches and bulbs initially, with setup able to be done on Android devices, and then early next year they will expand this to support Matter over Thread, additional device types and iOS support, likely in Q1 of 23. Akara had a good announcement for everyone, myself included, who are fans of their products, where they were saying that they will update the Akara Hub M2, will get an OTA update for Matter in December, which will allow you to add 40 Zigbee devices to a Matter smart home through that hub, so it's kind of allowing you to take those devices which are Zigbee based and then connect them into a Matter smart home ecosystem, which is nice for backwards compatibility. And then they are saying that other hubs will also get this update in the coming months after. They also announced that they have a new Hub M3 being released next year, and it's nice to see Akara updating older devices with a free update, meaning that your older devices can continue to work in a Matter smart home. Philips Hue users will also be happy that a software update is also coming for the Philips Hue Bridge in Q1 of 2023 that will also make most existing Hue lights and devices matter compatible much in the same way that Akara has done, which again is really great to see. And that firmware is actually available today as part of the beta program if you are feeling a little risky. Eve, who makes HomeKit devices and has primarily only been accessible for HomeKit users, announced that the Eve Energy, Eve Contact Sensor and Eve Motion Sensor have also been Matter certified and on December 12th, 2022, will get an OTA update to enable Matter with the remainder of their devices coming in Q1 of 23. And the cool thing about this actually is that Eve goes from making only HomeKit devices to making devices for all of the platforms in one fell swoop, which is good for everyone as it opens up even more options. So really good to see some of the major manufacturers committing to updates as that reduces e-waste and means that you can use your perfectly working devices into the future. But unfortunately it wasn't all good with Nanoleaf mentioning that it had no plans to update existing devices to be matter compatible, but that they are releasing a new version of their devices instead in Q1 of 23 with them saying that their existing products already work with all of the platforms and it wasn't a priority for them. So basically, we couldn't be bothered to commit the development resources to an OTA update when we could just sell you new hardware. There was also a worrying lack of discussion or even mention of one of the key features of Matter, which is called multi-admin. And if you aren't aware, multi-admin lets you connect and share a device in one ecosystem to another as you see fit. And we did see demos of this working at the show and it is part of the base matter specification. Jennifer Tui actually has a great video of this working actually and it looks promising and pretty good. But apparently some companies are working together on an improved version with some other companies but not all and some are forming other partnerships and it just seems like some gaps are starting to emerge on the united front. Hopefully they can get a handle on this and get things smoothed out but we will need to see how that goes over the coming months. It was actually interesting to see Maria Koopmans, who is the director of smart home and health at Amazon of all places, iterating that they need to get matter right to maintain trust of their customers and users. That's a sentiment I think many of us could agree with. If you remember back in the previous video I did about matter from a few weeks ago, I expressed a concern for how devices from one manufacturer will work when connected to another manufacturer's ecosystem and would there be device feature parity between them? And I said that surely manufacturers are going to want to give their ecosystems the upper hand. Well, again, it's not clear yet until we have these devices in hand and we can actually test it. But I did find it interesting to note that Nanoleaf mentioned that their devices would work with other platforms, but for more advanced features, you would be required to use the Nanoleaf app in order to control these. 
Again, I don't want to jump the gun on this and assume that this is how it's going to be for all devices and platforms, but it's just something to keep an eye on to see how that develops. So all in all, it was good to get a bit more information about how things are going to work. And in particular, it was good to see manufacturers committing to updating older devices for Matter. And in general, it does seem that most things are headed in the right direction, minus a few little hiccups. Of course, we won't know exactly how things are going to work until we can get our hands on some of the devices over the coming weeks and months. But as soon as it's possible to test them, you know that we will definitely be doing that. This is definitely more of a soft launch, I would say, since there aren't any devices or ecosystems we can really use as of right now. And it does seem that things will need to be updated. But I think it's good that they aren't saying that it's a perfect solution today. And they do acknowledge that it is going to take some time for it to be up to the vision that they have for Matter. With the CSA president saying that he thinks it will take around three years before we get to that place of it just works, which I do think is a reasonable timeline. Anyways, that's about going to do it for this video. What do you think about Matter so far? Has this changed your mind about anything or are you still on the fence? And what are your concerns with Matter going forward for your smart home? Do let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.